Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Thursday, April 28th with your morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen, is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship him. All right, we've got uh, Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 39 today. On one of those days, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there, who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed, and they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down through his bed, down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, saying, Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven to you, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home, glorifying God. And amazement seized them all, and they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen extraordinary things today. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in this house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners, to repentance. And they said to him, The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. And Jesus said to them, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. He also told them a parable. No one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new, and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be destroyed. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, desires new, for he says, the old is good. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days he's spoken to us by his son. Um, I think every time this text comes up, probably every time, <laughs> I always go right to the same, same thing, and i um, going to do it again today, so, sorry, <laughs> but it's just too, um, it's too good, <laughs> uh, and really, I think, as far as I can recall, this is the only place in scripture where something like this really um, happens in such a bold way, in that um, Jesus responds to the faith of others in, in regards to someone else. Although, I mean, uh, you know, you can look at it in terms of when, um, uh, you know, when a man comes to Jesus saying, you know, my daughter is at home dying and he um, says, you know, your daughter is, is well, kind of does this distance kind of healing kind of thing. But in this case, it's, mm. it's, there's so many interesting um, facets to this in that, um, the, the man is a paralytic, you know, he's got a distinct problem, he's paralyzed. The friends bring him to Jesus to be healed because they know Jesus can heal him. And they do everything they can to get him in, lowering him down from the roof. 
And when Jesus saw their faith, and that's kind of the key, you circle that, underline it, whatever you want to do, but he saw their faith, plural. And uh, Greek is, is fun in that, um, you know, it, it uh, the, the way words are, um, just the grammar of the words, you can see if it's, um, you know, first person, second person, third person, plural, singular, the gender of it, uh, you know, feminine, uh, masculine, neuter, whatever, um, you can kind of see... You, you can see how it all connects. So you know um, who's ta what's talking about what and all this good stuff. So we know that it is he saw their faith. Now, is it all of their faith, including the paralytic or just the, the friends? Doesn't really matter. It's their faith. When he sees their faith, he turns to the man and says, man, singular, <laughs> you, you guy on the, on the mat, your sins are forgiven you. Um... And so, on, on well, on one hand, it is the, um, you get a couple things coming out of this. First would be that, um, you know, obviously the, the desire was him to be healed from his affliction, you know, which they saw as their, his paralysis. Of course, Jesus knows the true affliction is his sin. And so, um, you know, seeing this guy who can't get up, can't move from his, his, uh, his bed, um, who's being lowered down in front of him, and the first thing Jesus does is, I forgive you your sins. That is your greatest problem. Um, now, the scribes and Pharisees freak out because they're like, well, who can forgive sins but God? Um, but they could have had a nice little theological discussion there of, why did he just why didn't he just heal him? It's like they all knew Jesus. You know, they'd heard about Jesus. Everybody. I mean, that's why everybody was there. Because um, this is the great healer. And so, um, you know, why, why is he not healing? He, he's forgiving sins. What's going on here? That would have been a lot more of a fun discussion. But that's what he does. He sees the, the true affliction. He understands what afflicts us and what is the most important thing that we need dealt with. Um, it is not our, our physical ailments. It is our spiritual death, our spiritual paralysis, um, and that he heals. But he heals on account of the faith of those who brought him. So then we also get this nice... Um, um, text that points to our intercession for others that um you know god hears us when we pray for other people when we come to him on behalf of others um and you know not that we as i pray that they they have enough faith that they will turn to god and and seek help but you know what we don't have to worry about that <laughs> we just go to god and say please regardless of their faith you know, in spite of their their faith or lack thereof, um, Lord, forgive them. <laughs> Lord, bring them what they need most. Um, and of course, like we all do, we need forgiveness. But um, so yeah, this is a, a very cool um, example of how Jesus responds to when we bring the needs of others to Him, um, and He looks at us. And says, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. I will do what you ask. I will do as as you say. I will do it. Um, so never, never think that prayer is no good. You know, when when you want to help somebody, when you are um, just I want to I want to do something. And we always have the thing where we see somebody, especially a friend, a loved one who who needs help, but they don't want to ask for help. <laughs> they're they're determined to do it on their own. And we're just dying to help them. And we want to do whatever we can. And it's just, it, 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 it eats at us. Because either they don't want help, they want to accept help, whatever it is. But we want to do something. We want to do something. And we want it to be something big and something meaningful and impactful. Pray. <laughs> you, you could, I mean, that's the, one of the greatest things you can do is pray for them. And it gets such a bad reputation these days where it's like, well, what you're not doing anything. You're just thoughts and prayers are useless. You know, what we need is action. And, you know, when it comes to helping people, well, action is great, except when somebody won't tell you what they need, when they won't allow you to help. I mean, um, we're a very independent, proud people. <laughs> and so we, we are not likely to share our weaknesses or vulnerabilities with people. So, um, you know, don't, don't believe the hype. Prayer is great. Prayer is strong and powerful. Um, God listens to our prayers. 
And so one of the, the, the greatest things you can do is to pray for somebody. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> It, it it goes like just against our, our, our gut feeling, though. It's, it's, we feel like, well, there should be more we can do. It's like, well, who's the one who, who, who can provide what we truly need? Is that us? Or is that God? Um, now, he hopefully he will, he will use us to provide for um, them in, in material ways. But um, lift them up to God. You know, ask God to provide what they truly need. And you might not know that, what they truly need. I mean, other than forgiveness, we already covered that. But, um, so yeah, prayer. Awesome stuff. Use it. All right, let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Blessings to you on this uh, Thursday. Hope, uh, hope you have a good day. Um, and, uh, you know, take some time and, and pray for somebody today. Just, you know, whoever's been on your heart lately, whoever that you, somebody who you want to help, maybe you don't know how, they won't let you know, <laughs> uh, pray for them. Lift them up in prayer. Be a, one of the be best things you can do today. So have a good day. Blech. Have a good day. <laughs> and until tomorrow, peace be with you.